This is the October 19th, 2021 meeting of the Cushnet Public Library Board of Trustees. We are being audio taped and videotaped and we do have a quorum. Our first item on the agenda is the Secretary's report from September 7th. Does anyone have any clarifications or uh, questions about those minutes? No. Okay. A motion. I make a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting, September 7th. I second them. All in favor, we'll just raise our hands. That way we'll put the masks. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Next is the budget. Find my paper will be good. <laughs> so we're into the second quarter of the fiscal year and I think things are pretty status quo. Um, as I've mentioned before, we're spending the office supplies line quicker than expected um, and we'll most likely need to rely on state aid to cover any office supply expenses in the second half of the fiscal year. Um, so don't be, I'm well aware <laughs> of how it's spent out it is, so don't be alarmed by that. Um, but I think every other line is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Unless you have any questions, I think we're in line with where we should be at this point. Anybody have any questions on the, on the budget? Okay. We need a motion. Motion to accept the budget. All in favor? We'll just, we have to verbally say aye though, aye. I think. Aye. So aye. just, so we'll raise our hands, <laughs> but we, know, we don't know what we're raising our hands for. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, old business, uh, the community room usage. So when we last met, we talked about potentially opening the room and at that time decided not to. Um, However, I, I am coming today asking you to reconsider um, that um, just for small groups, 10 people or less, and uh, the groups I'm thinking of primarily are the friends of the library who need a space to meet to plan fundraising activities for this library. <laughs> um, so friends, the book group that meets monthly, they're, they're not going to be able to meet outside any longer, and in fact, they canceled or postponed their October meeting because it was just too cold and dark um, in the evening when they were planning on meeting outside. Um, so, um, and then the, what is the third group? Well, obviously you're all in here. So. The cultural council. <laughs> but the cultural council. In the past, thank you, Jerry. In the past, the cultural council has used the space to discuss their annual um, uh, to discuss their annual business and what they're going to do with the funds that they have um, to distribute. And I don't know that they're going to ask us again this year, but they have used us often in the past, so I anticipate we may hear from them. And it would, you know, it would be a shame to, you know, for a group of six people to say, no, I'm sorry, you can't. I mean, we're at a point where, you know, people are going to the theater and being indoors at events, so I think that we could easily make the room, you know, accommodate the room so that people could be spread out as much as they want to be. Obviously, we're still wearing masks here, so the masks would be required. Um, I've moved one of our temperature check kiosks into this room, so we can say that it's subject to a temperature check. I can't have staff in here actually enforcing that with an outside group, but if the leader of the group knows that it's recommended, then hopefully people will just pop by and stand in front of it for a second and um, before they attend the meeting. Um, I think this is totally doable. We can limit it to one a day. We can just have it on the days where, um, you know, I know the custodian's here the next day to, to clean the room. I mean, we can really make, I don't, you know, I don't think we're gonna get bombarded with requests, but I do think it would be nice to have it as an option. Particularly, I am really thinking of the friends and the business that they need to do. And um, I, I would really love to say yes to our longstanding book group to give them a space as well. Um, so hopefully um, you're all agreeable to that. I did send you the revised application and in the application it would be to accommodate groups of, of 10 members or less. 
and it's mentioned on there about wearing the masks and being subject to, to a temperature check. Um, so questions about that or concerns? Yes. I think that since things are seeming to improve, the kids have gone back to school without major problems. I don't see any reason why we can't move forward with allowing people in here. And start small. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like, right. You know, that's, yeah. we'll I think see you've where it covered, goes. You know, you get all the safety precautions in place, so I think it's fine. And yeah. this is something that the staff feels comfortable doing? Yes. The sta I mean, the staff is not looking to lead programs in here right. yet. Mm -hmm. Like, that still isn't, you know, I've said we don't have to revisit that mm -hmm. until 2022. We've taken that off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that no one feels pressured to do anything <clears throat> um, to lead any sort of program if they're not comfortable. Um, so, but they're, they are comfortable with having us to a accommodating a small group right. being in the space. And especially, I think if we're limiting it to that one, a one time a day, and the then we make sure it gets people. disinfected right, right mm -hmm. you know, right after or the following morning it's disinfected. You know, it's air we leave the doors open overnight, it's aired out. You know, the mm -hmm. the HVAC right. works really well in here too, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think all that combined Safe. makes people feel mm -hmm. that it, it's a comfortable thing to do and we I think we, we all feel it's the right time to to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's we've tried to be so careful and we have been so careful and I think we've done a lot of things yeah. right. And I think this is the next step now for us to take. Thank you. Yes, those are good points. Thank you for asking and mentioning those things. Did we not, do we want to or do we not want to mention the food or the drink? I know that was one of the things last time. Like, do we want to say, like, yes, it's great, but no food and drinks? Or um, do we not want to, do we just not want to say it and leave it? I mean, we can't, the, the uh, only, uh, that's, not a thing for the aside from maybe some water from the, the friends i know the mm -hmm. friends don't come in particularly right. with food or drink i don't think the culture the cultural council i think wants to be you know in and out <laughs> like when they yeah. when they meet <laughs> so again maybe someone's got a water bottle or something but it's not a food thing i know in the past the book group if we're you know to right. not snacks. to signal them out but they do bring snacks and they're mm -hmm. that is a social thing but right. i mean i think they would be totally agreeable if if the mm -hmm. if it was said that for now, there there yeah, should be just for now. you know no no food you know right maybe no food maybe instead no of food, no food because I mean your people sip are of typically going to take a drink right. and then put your mask back right. on anyway but so food tends to be like more of a thing and then you might forget to put it back on maybe I don't know <laughs> with the mask so we could certainly say that for now you know that's no food I mean that I I think they would be I think that's reasonable I think they would be very agreeable to that I don't anticipate that that would cause any issues mm -hmm. so if that's if that's something that you know i'm just thinking like why you know why not say it because if we right. get other groups like right. who knows if the girl scouts are going to come in or you know right. now you get if we didn't have it on there then they're gonna well it wasn't on there so we decided right. to bring cookies no i could i could put um whatever. no no food i could say you know the usual covered beverages allowed no other you know no other um Covered, yeah, but covered no, but no food at this time or something yeah. like that. No, f no food at this time. Yeah, because then the covered beverages is in line with the normal. Um, yeah. The normal policy. So without having to revise, like what I really don't want to do is for you to revise the community room policy <laughs> just to then have to revise. So that's why I thought, well, if we just yep. edited the application, then that doesn't yep. mean that you have to revise your whole, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> policy. Right. Yeah, but I, if I we think if you add that s statement in just right there, I don't yep. think we would need to revise the okay. the policy yep. itself. I think that should be. Yep. No, I can definitely do that. That way, it doesn't it doesn't uh, leave it up to interpretation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, that's a great point. Okay. Does anyone else have any more comments on the on the application itself? Okay, then can we have a motion? I'll make a motion to um, accept the application with the one revision of food. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Excellent. Thank you all. The book group will be thrilled. Mm. <laughs> the next, uh, next up on the old business is the pavilion. 
All right, so just a quick update. I'm sure you've all seen um, when you've driven by or today, perhaps when you've come in, the pavilion work is well underway. Um, I did want to let you know it's um, about two feet taller than had been um, anticipated. It is <laughs> tall. <laughs> um, it was the, the posts. Um, are only available or, or at the time were only available as 16 foot posts so the plan mm -hmm. was to cut them down to 14 foot posts before they were put into the ground mm -hmm. that didn't happen <laughs> so uh, <laughs> there was a little I think miscommunication Snatch. there um, Jim Merritt says he accepts you know responsibility for that I you know poor guy he's had a lot going on so <laughs> I don't want to put that on on his plate but he did say he accepts responsibility for that um, so it is tall. Um, I, otherwise, I think it looks great. You know, I think it'll 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 be really wonderful when it's done. I know they're um, they were waiting for um, a day this week, and we are supposed to have some days in the 70s this week, or close to 70, and that will be a good time for them to um, prime it. And and because um, they can't do that when it's below 60, I guess. So they were hoping to work on that this week, and then doing the roof as well. Um, at this time, it looks like they're going to hold off on putting the um, astroturf in for the bottom, you know, the floor until the spring, because if they put that down now and then with the winter coming, mm -hmm. if people are on it and it, you know, no. they just would prefer waiting. And I think it's best to leave it as is for now, um, just to get us through the first winter. Um, with it so uh, they'll skip that they'll re you know come to that in the spring and then hopefully you know by mid-spring we'll be able to start doing um, programs out there so um, at some point over the next few months I'm obviously gonna need to work you know with you on a policy for that because I, I do believe um, based on some comments we've had at the counter already and you know that I've seen on Facebook that I think people might be looking to use that for non-library um, mm -hmm. events and we're gonna have to decide whether or not you want people just hanging out there in the afternoon mm -hmm. on a <laughs> or <laughs> how, how you how you want that to go what we what we envision using it for once it's complete um, I think once it is complete we'll have a better sense of uh, of that and um, the friends have very loosely at their annual meeting discussed perhaps purchasing um, furniture for it if, or um, if we want to have outdoor chairs that would be easy to um, move in and out of that space so there's been some talk about that but nothing obviously um, concrete um, but we will certainly need to be discussing a policy on on its use um, before we start using it <laughs> so just a heads up on that but I do think it looks great and I, I really appreciate that the building department team has worked so hard on it and uh, the DPW has assisted them, which is great. Um, and you know, we, we appreciate that the Board of Selectmen approved using CARES money um, to help cover all the expenses of that so far. So, so that's the update on the pavilion. It looks great. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. Definitely, it looks good. It'll be nice to see it finish. It will, yeah. <laughs> I know, I love seeing the progress every time I come. Yeah, it's been fun. I think in the, you know, kids who have come to Outdoor story time, I think, um, have really enjoyed when, when they're working there as we're doing story oh, yeah. time. I think it's been fun to also <laughs> see that happening. And we tried to tie it in a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, when, when we're watching that. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think everyone's enjoying the progress. All right, does any, anybody have anything else on the pavilion? If not, we'll move on to new business. Uh, items that are lost. So um, when we met last and we spoke about the hot spots and we were talking about replacement costs and I, someone mentioned, oh, does that actually happen that things don't get returned? And so after that meeting, I mean, I see a lost report of new lost items every month. But after that meeting, I said, oh, I'm curious as to how many lost items we actually have. So I had um, the sales network run a report for us. And um, through the end of August, we actually have 970 items that are set to lost. That goes back to 2003. So it's not 970 items lost since last week. It's, it's over the course of 18 years. Um, but it's still a pretty hefty, yeah. <laughs> hefty number for 
you know, I mean, our collection is right around 23,000 physical items. So when you, I guess, 970 compared to 23,000 isn't all that much, but it's still quite a bit. Um, and uh, three, I did figure out that 307 of those are from 2003 through 2011, and 663 are from 2012 until now. Um, so certainly that, that's a lot more. But again, our circulation and attendance has increased so much in the past six years that it's no surprise that the amount of lost items would also um, increase. From what I can tell, because I've tried to go into a lot of the records, it's a mixture of um, accretion card cardholders and other um, sales network cardholders. So it's not strictly accretion card cardholders that aren't, you know, that are borrowing and not returning. Um, it's it's a mixture across the board. It's some of it is people who have never stepped foot in our library ever, but we've sent a book through the delivery system and it's been borrowed at another library and has never been returned. So it's not doesn't even account for just people who've come here, it's throughout the network. Um, what I really started to look at though, was that oh, it would be great if we could clean up this cataloging a little <laughs> um, and remove items that have been lost for 10 years or more. I mean, if you, someone who borrowed a book in 2003, particularly let's say a child who borrowed a book in 2003 or whose parents borrowed a book on the child's card in 2003, 18 years later, that child's coming to get a library card as an adult, and they're in the system as a blocked patron for things they don't remember having when they were five years old, nor were they responsible for those items at five years old. Um, so I feel it would be, um, I don't know, just a, a nice uh, service. Other libraries do this, that when something is 10 years old or more, we just let it go. Um, for the most part, the people who are blocked as a result of our items are still going to be blocked because they have a lot more, it's not just one lost item, mm -hmm. it's multiple lost items. So us removing ours isn't actually going to unblock them in the system, but you know, when they do show up somewhere as an adult trying to get a card or, you know, show up 18 years later trying to use their library again, they're at least not blocked for an accushionate item. So um, with, you know, what I'm proposing is that we remove anything that's 10 years old or older. Um, so that would be going back to 2011 to 2003. Um, so that would be 307 items we'd be removing. We'd remove the charges from the patron's account. Um, and just sort of move forward. I mean, a lot of the titles have already been replaced, not by the patron who lost the item, but through the years, especially with popular items, we've repurchased them um, or purchased a second copy, um, especially with the kids' books. So, you know, it's, I just think it would be nice, to, a nice thing to do um, to get, get that out. Um, that said, though, you know, we did just have someone pop in recently that returned a book that was borrowed in 2005. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> so big cleaning. <laughs> right. I'm sure that's what it was, cleaning and came upon the book. Um, and I uh, was happy to pay the $2 overdue fine, which is the max overdue charge for a lost item, no matter when you return it. So, no matter, you know, people think they're going to owe thousands of dollars. No, absolutely not. It's only $2. <laughs> um, and a lot of times we're willing to at least cut that in half if they have a lot of them. So anyway, if, if, it's, if, it's, if you approve it, then I'll start working on that. I think the network will be able to help me as well. So that it's not like I'm manually you know, having to remove um, the items, but um, I would get started on that. Is this um, just a one-time thing or are you going to be doing it annually? So it will be 10 years? I think years going, forward, going forward, if and that's a, that's a great question, thank you. But I think going forward, that would be a good practice. I mean, obviously yeah. items were lost prior to 2003 and someone took care of those at some point. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, and then it just sort of stopped. Um, it, they could have been working on a 10 year cycle for all I know. You know, I came on board in 2015. I can't find any record of that, but it might, you know, the previous director had left in 2014, so she could have been working on a 10 or 12 year cycle, and that's why there's nothing lost prior to, to, to 2003. When did but sales it, begin? Could that be that? Um, no, sales began in the 90s. Oh, okay. Um, so that, I had thought of that, but that was in the 90s, so, um, 
Yeah, so I don't think it's it's attributed to that. But good point. Um, but yeah, I think going forward, maybe if, if every fall, you know, we, we got into, that's something that we do with, the, you know, in November of every year to clean, clean the cataloging records and then, you know, also just to check on the status of things, <laughs> see how things yeah. are going, you know. Um, also, just as a note, I just realized I did jot this down. We have a hundred, um, just about a hundred lost titles since January of 2020. So all of those people have been reached out to multiple times by phone, by email, because we were reaching them during COVID, trying to, you know, because we were fine free for so long and allowing people to return things that they had borrowed in January of 2020 and June of 2021 and not even paying the $2. So um, those people have been contacted numerous times, but I've also started going back and contacting people who have things lost from 2017, 18, 19, just saying, Hey, just want to be in touch. If you have these items, you know, I have options for you of what we can do to mm -hmm. make it easy for you to return them to us. So um, I have gone back that far, and I think that's another, doing this is another, uh, a way to assist that almost. If we were to do it annually, it would be a way to assist the process of keeping records of who's been contacted, how, mm -hmm. you know, do we keep contacting them? Do we let it go? <laughs> like that's, you know. Um, but also, I have reached out to quite a few parents, and I've tried to express to, to quite a few, especially of parents whose kids are now in high school who were in, you know, perhaps elementary or middle when they were borrowing the items, and now they're in high school. Like, eventually, your child might need to use this library. So if it's just a matter of feeling, like, worried about returning the books because you're worried about the, the fees, the, you know, like, I don't want that to be the barrier and the reason why people don't return the items <laughs> so um, I is think it just books or is it oh no it's a mixture of everything and yeah it's 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 a mixture of everything and I, I can't even say it's more so one than the other it's it's a real mix there's missing uh, lost magazines DVDs um, audiobooks so it's it's it runs the gamut of the whole collection um, but yeah, so if, if you approve it, then going forward, I think it should be an annual, um, as close to annual as possible <laughs> project, depending on how much sales can do on the back end, then as close um, to an annual project as possible. Um, and again, you know, I don't know if people would have concerns about, oh, well, then that's these people, you know, are not now not being charged and other people are, you know, and paying the, you know, doing the right thing and paying the fee, if that's what you look at as the right thing. Um, but most of these people are blocked no matter what we do because they, they it's not just our items, it's multiple items mm -hmm. we're talking about. So, from other libraries, and I can't do anything about those. <laughs> so, how does everyone feel? I'm fine with that. Good, like that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. clean it up, make it an annual, yep. mm -hmm. make it an annual yeah. thing. Yeah. All right. You want us to take a vote on that? That would be great. Thank you. All right. <laughs> let's take a vote on that. Okay. Can we have a motion? I make a motion that we uh, waive the blocking of uh, the blocking process for items that have been um, lost for 10 years or more, or more than 10 years. All right. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Next under new business is the state financial report. Yeah, I just wanted to provide you with a quick review of that. Um, we turned that in in September. It was due by October 1st this year. So um, Jen and I both signed it on the 21st of September and um, off it went. Um, but the financial report is the second of the two state aid reports that we do every year. Um, and the financial piece is just basically used to confirm that we're complying with the um, protocols of the state aid program. So I usually review this with you, so I'll just go through what they are. Um, one of the questions, or one of the pieces of the financial report is to determine whether or not the municipal appropriation requirement has been met for the fiscal year, and yes, it has. We know, we know that by town meeting whether or not we've met our municipal appropriation requirement. So we've known that, it's not a surprise, but now the state knows, yes, we've met that um, requirement. 
Um, the second question is, are we open to all Massachusetts residents? Yes, anyone who lives in the Commonwealth is eligible to get a card here at our library. Uh, do we charge for normal library services, like using the collection? No, we don't charge for normal library services. Are we open a minimum number of hours? Um, though this was waived for FY21 due to COVID, um, it's still important to note that our requirement is 40 hours a week. Um, we were open, I think, when we were doing the takeout service, 35 or 36 hours a week, so we were right below. We still would have complied because we were within 90% of the requirement, so we still would have been okay if they hadn't waived us, but they did waive it. Um, it's also required that we be open at least five days a week and some evening hours. So we're open six days a week, we're open four evenings a week, um, and now with our new hours, we're actually open 45 hours. So we're open five hours more yes. than the requirement, which I is love the new hours. Good thing. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just heard that from someone else yeah. today. That um, it's so yeah. convenient. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to hear that because I, I was unsure if people were gonna be okay with the opening on the half an hour piece and closing mm -hmm. on the half an hour. But that doesn't seem to phase anyone nope. at all, which is mm -hmm. great. And people are. Always, it's just. They don't need to wonder what day of the week it is. Remember. They just know That's it's, the best it's part. Thursday morning, yeah. I can go to the library. Like yeah. as long as it's after 1030, I can go to the library. So um, that's that's been great. So I'm glad to hear that. Someone else just mentioned it this morning. So we, we've gotten really positive feedback on that. So um, which is which is good. So that's we've come a long way with the hours i think i mean it wasn't that long ago we weren't open on fridays if people right. really wanted friday hours and we got the fridays <laughs> on and then part of when we were doing that strategic plan and we you know then knew we were going to push for friday hours but when i look back on those survey results a lot of people also wanted more mor morning hours so now they have more morning hours <laughs> um, and we didn't really lose evening hours so that's you know that's great so good i'm glad um the fifth requirement is um, the director needs to have a master's in library science, which you know I have that. Um, and the biggest piece is whether or not we meet the materials expenditure requirements. So a library of our size is required to expend 16% of our total operating budget on materials for direct patron use. And even though they ended up waiving that requirement, um, they just asked that libraries get as close as possible to not, if they were, if you're able to spend, to spend. So um, we did that. We we beat full compliance by over eight thousand dollars last year. So we did not um, cut on spending at all. Um, and that's thanks to the fact that our budget, you know, stayed pretty much intact. So our operating budget wasn't cut. So that's a huge plus that we had support from the town which is always, of course, appreciated. Um, but also, you know, we had a healthy state aid account to help. Um, and our friends group was helpful where they could be as well. So, um, yeah, so we're good. We, we met all of the requirements for state aid. And um, now we just wait and see what the award is. Uh, and that we'll, we'll know that in December. So, so that's good news. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see what that is this year. It will be. I mean, we know for sure there's going to be a, a cut. You know, we we just know that because of a big component of this um, state aid award is based on the circulation that you do to residents outside of your town. And we did not circulate nearly as high to residents outside of our town. No one did. Um, but you know, it's it's you get a certain. Um, it's not a dollar amount, it's like a few pennies per circulation to outside residents. So that's why our state aid has been so high in the past few years is because our circulation to residents outside of Akrishnan has been so high. We, you know, our 02745 for North End of New Bedford circulation is sometimes nearly as high as our circulation to 02743. So um, that's a huge thing for us because then we, we get, um, you know, rewarded with the state aid <laughs> with state aid funds as a result of that. So we're sure for sure going to see a drop this year, but that's across the board. It's not personal, <laughs> you know, to us. It's not anything we did. We couldn't have done anything any differently. So um, certainly, that's I'm sure we'll, it'll swing back up. Oh, I yeah, <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else on the 
Any questions or anything on the financial report? Okay. No. Nope. We'll move on to the next item. Okay. Children's room assistant position. Mm -hmm. So um, this is, as you know, um, the third vacancy we've had this year since um, end of March, um, where we do have another uh, staff member leaving for a full-time position at a neighboring library. <laughs> Um, this one is particularly difficult for me, and I'm, it's just, it's difficult for me to lose this particular staff member who's been a member of our team for five years, um, but it's also difficult for me because the, the children's room, as I think you all know, um, is the, to me, the heart of this library. Um, worked really hard before we had that children's room assistant position to make the space welcoming to offer programs as much as I could while trying to balance being a director, a new director, and also trying to still be a children's librarian. Um, I was so happy when we got that children's room assistant position and I was grateful that an existing staff member wanted that position and so she and I were able to work together to really create what that position would do and it's, I feel we're so close to getting that to be a full-time position. I really do believe that we're going to have support from the Finance Committee and from the town. Um, I know that the town administrator is, is being as supportive as she can be for it um, for FY23. So we're so close to that being a full-time position. So it's just, it really is unfortunate, the timing, and that I fully support people moving on and, and um, using their degrees to the best that they can. And this is a person with a master's in library science who deserves um, a, you know, to, to, to make the most of her degree and to, to go forward with that. And so I 100% support um, you know, everyone on the staff who's, who's moved on for full time. But the timing of it just, I'm not gonna lie and say it doesn't hurt, it hurts. <laughs> um, because I, we're so close and now we're going to be down that position again I 100% I, that is the heart of our library our children's circulation is almost three-quarters of our total circulation every month you just look at the numbers and you see how and and yes the people who you know come in and borrow they're not just you know an adult might come in and borrow one or two books a family comes in and they borrow 20 so of course people are there's more borrowing in volume happening but um, and I attended the PTO meeting at the um, elementary school last night, and one of the parents told me how you know her son, who's only in kindergarten, knows to look at the back of our books to see the date that they were added, and gets like such a kick out of the fact that he might be the first person to take that book home, or you know, knowing that oh, they just got this this hmm. month, I'm like the first or second person. And she mentioned that they go to other libraries in the area, and that. There are no other libraries in the area that have the collection that we have for the size library that we are. I mean, we're not a city library, so the size library that we are, um, to have what we have for the picture book collection in particular, she was talking about. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I don't think I'm out of turn saying that, yeah, we do have an amazing collection. Um, I work really hard to develop that collection every month, um, along with the children's room assistant. Um, we take a lot of pride in that space and, and it's rough losing the person who helps me with that because now that's back to being on me. The programs for now are back to being on me. So on the one hand, I'm kind of relieved. I'm not expected to do indoor programs right now because I don't think I could manage doing the indoor programs and everything else I have going on. Now that I don't do them regularly, I realize how difficult that is. I did cover um, outdoor story time for a few weeks and I'll take that back on um, by the end of the month for as long as we can do it. I love doing it, but you forget how, to, when you want to do a good program, it's a time consuming right. thing. It's not just like wake up and go grab some books off the shelf and come do them, you, you prepare for it. Um, so that'll be back on me for now and I'll, I have hesitation in posting the job because um, if I bring someone on board who then I find out in uh, July doesn't want to work full time or can't work full time, then what do I do <laughs> then? It's a union position. What do I do? <laughs> um, you know, a, a few people have advised that I could, in the interview process, say that we're working towards getting mm -hmm. it to be full time, and is that something that they're interested in? But you know, someone can tell you in December that they're interested in something, and come July, they're no longer 
interested and they like what they're doing at 19 hours a week. So it's a gamble to post it now. Um, I am going to post it now, but it's a gamble to post it because who knows? But um, I had spoken with you a couple of meetings ago about we are really, when that budget season starts, going to need to work together as a team. You know, I, I need, this is when the Board of Trustees can step up in the budget process and say, um, this is what this library needs. And so we're really going to need um, to work together to get that position to be full time. Um, because the next person who comes in, if we get someone really great in, I cannot lose them to a neighboring library just because that neighboring library offers full time positions. Correct. That's the, it's, it has nothing, you know, it's not because people don't like working here. I know they like working here. I know we have a, a you know, and, and fortunately, the three new people who have come on board since May, fortunately, we've all, you know, continued to gel together. But there's only so many times that can happen, I would imagine, before <laughs> that something's going to rock the boat. Um, so, you know, we, we really need to make that position go full time. And I just have to hope whoever comes in for it wants full time, you know, come FY23. So I, I really just wanted to give you that update um, and, uh, you know, let you know that, what, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really, I don't know. <laughs> if anyone has anything to add, great. If not, we can, we can, we can move on. It was, Cause I'll, I'll just start complaining or something, saying something I don't mean. <laughs> okay. Does anyone have anything else to add about the children's room position at this time? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we will just we, we will um, table that okay. to the um, budget discussions for FY23. How's that? Sounds good. Sounds good. Yep. And I'll I'll be less emotional come then. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and that's okay. Well, it's passionate. Yeah. That's thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, next on the agenda is the are the standing committees. Yeah, I was thinking about the budget and thinking, oh, wait, we haven't really talked about right. committees recently. And I went back and I was, you know, trying to find in, in old meeting minutes. When, when did we last do this? So it was May 8th of 2019 at that meeting that um, you all, you know, appointed yourselves to different committees. And um, I thought today would be a good time just to, to go through that again because, you know, since we did this we you know one of the people who was on the board and on a committee is no longer on our board unfortunately and then you know one of the committees we had the centennial committee um nothing much ever came of the centennial unfortunately <laughs> because of covid so i mean we we had things come of the centennial but then the, the big event you know didn't happen as a as a result so um but i thought it would be a good time to just review the Facilities Committee, Finance Committee, which helps with budgeting prep, um, governance, planning, and I was hoping that we we haven't had a personnel committee um, for a while. I was hoping that maybe the planning and personnel committee could combine, and primarily why I'm looking for that is because by the end of this year, most likely, we will have added four new staff members. And if I do have issues that, uh, that come up, um, you know, I, I, it shouldn't just be that I call Jen because she's the chair, so I default call her to say, like, hey, could you just listen to what I have to say about this? Or um, maybe in the hiring process of this, the new person for the children's room assistant position, I might want to bump some ideas off someone. And um, so I'm hoping that mm -hmm. if we have a personnel committee, then at least I know there's someone I can call without, you know, just necessarily, I mean, Jen may be on that committee, but if she weren't, um, and then I, I just, you know, hate to call her by default just because she's the chair. So, um, which, I, not that I don't love her, <laughs> <It's okay>. but, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> but um, anyway, and who knows, maybe I wouldn't even call, but it would just be nice for me to know that I had someone that I could say, hey, let me just bump these ideas off you because it's not appropriate to discuss it with the rest of the staff when there's you know a new person coming on board or something like that and my mom can only take so much of it so. <laughs> are there any other committees you feel a need for just the ones um he, so facilities finance governance and planning slash personnel is what i'm hoping we can do um in the past there, we did briefly have a technology committee and then that sort of fell um by the wayside and I think if we did have any a lot can fall under that planning umbrella it's it's technically the long-range planning but 
you could easily discuss technology things under the planning umbrella. So that that's what I feel um, the need for. If anyone has any suggestions, of course I'm 100% open to that, but those are the the committees I sort of inherited, I guess you could say, but they're the ones that do seem to fit best with what we're doing. Okay, let's see. Um, does any, I mean, do we want to go down uh, to each committee and see, you want to do it that way? So we'll do the facilities. Diana, you still good being on the facilities? Okay. And then um, Henry's no longer here, so uh, does anybody else want to? help out Diane with the facilities committee. <laughs> it's, it's not too it's not too hard, is yeah, it? Diane? Right? It's, it's not, not well. I mean it really it's it's you like, know getting quotes for things that we might need like around you know, around or um, you know, I mean basically it's just the the building stuff. It's information gathering like one good thing I thought that that's because I actually took the time to reread like what are the purposes of these committees so that inspect all library property and determine necessary improvements like that would be great like we've been in the building already for six years this year which is you know to come December which is really hard to believe but it's six years <laughs> December so Every now, I mean, that's not something that has to happen regularly, but if you happen to be coming by the library anyway and you just took a look around and you say, hey, Dina, do you know about this? Or, mm -hmm. you know, hey, years ago we had talked about, you know, the brick being repointing on the facade, repointed on the facade. Has that ever happened? Which it hasn't. So, you know, things like that, um, right. you know, would certainly be helpful because, I mean, I, I do see a lot and the staff sees things too but you might see something from a different perspective that you're like oh hey why is that uh why is that got a huge crack in it i don't know like you know what i mean like, right so if the facilities committee was doing that too and saying you know hey just want to make sure you're aware you know that would be a good piece too but yes it is primarily if we have to go to bid for something like when we were looking into fencing on the property at one time you know the the facilities committee worked on that you know and um or the um when we were trying to figure out a pergola thank right. you Target. Yeah, Target. i was like that you know which all ended up you know coming through the town anyway but we didn't know that you know right so i can i can do that take henry's place all right so diane and jerry okay and finance I'm good. I'm good too. All right. So Thank Nancy you. Nancy and Steve. And governance. I'm, I'm good there too. I'm good there too. All right. And planning and personnel. I think we should. We should. Someone I should think nominate so. Danielle. I was yeah. just going to say. Uh, Danielle. <laughs> yeah. Does that sound good? All right. So do we'll do Danielle and I'll still stay on that as well. So. And Thank you. And I was thinking Danielle is a possibility or hoping that Danielle would be interested um, because Danielle also, which I think you all know, has worked in a library before. So she has that perspective of having been employed in a library <laughs> and, and sort of knows, you know, how that goes. So that'd be perfect. Yay, Super helpful. Exciting. You can also be on it too, Nancy. I'm not trying to bump you off yeah. the committee if you'd yeah. like to be the third. <laughs> Well, yeah. since it's kind of two together. Yeah. yeah. Do three if you want to. Yes, if you, if you still want it, that's my second part. I just didn't also want you to, because you already do finance and governance, mm -hmm. so. Do you want to stay on the planning in person yeah. now? Yeah. All right. Oh, great. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you all. All right. And you don't need us to vote on that or anything? I don't think. I don't, I don't think there's a, a formal No, I don't think so. Vote. I tried to see that in the minutes and I didn't, I didn't see that there had been. I didn't from see the, So I think we're good. If I find out differently, we'll, we'll add it in for next time. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think we're good. It's pretty informal. Okay, we have the director's report. Okay. I I can find it. So I think we have some exciting collaboration opportunities coming up with the um, schools, which figures it's <laughs> the timing of that couldn't be better too. But I did meet with the school media specialist from Ford. She came by um, to discuss some possible collaborations. There's um, talk of a literacy night happening in December, and we're hoping to be a part of that in December. So that would be great. 
Um, I also, like I mentioned, attended the PTO meeting um, last night to discuss um, the Beanstack collaboration that we have with them. The PTO, um, when kids um, log their minutes in Beanstack, we then every month give um, some statistics to the PTO um, and they give prizes to people who participated based on the number of minutes read, the number of books read, and we pick someone at random just um, through a little raffle we do here. So um, I heard that they've got a cushion at Creamery gift cards um, that will last a little bit. So they, they've purchased quite a few of those. So they, they take care of handing all that out. We just provide them with the, the names. But we have that going on and that will run through the school year, which is great. Um, this Saturday, a few members of our staff, um, we were invited by the um, Teachers Association to take part in their annual trunk or treat event, which is happening over in the parking lots between the two schools. Um, so that's exciting because um, the staff got really um, into um, our theme and costumes. <laughs> um, so I think we're gonna have a, a real fun time at that. So when is that again? It's this Saturday, Saturday the 23rd Saturday. from two to four over in the school parking lots. I believe it's $5 um, to participate. $10 if you have a car that you'd like to submit and to hand out candy. Um, but there's a lot of, I think, opportunities happening with the schools this year, so I'm very excited for that, and I'm gonna try to work on that as much as possible because um, it's so important to have a healthy collaboration between the schools and the public library. Um, so I really tried to impress last night at the meeting upon the fact that, you know, we're here to help in any way that we can, and, um, you know, I talked with a couple of the teachers who were there about potentially doing like classroom visits, which we did before COVID, so it'd be great if we could get back into that. Um, I think that the cost of the bus to come here is kind of cost prohibitive, prohibitive for them to do a field trip here, but if we could bring the library to the classroom, you know, we would like to do that also. So I think there's a lot of good things happening um, with that. Um, we mentioned the Cultural Council, the Akushnet Cultural Council, the deadline for grant applications was October 15th. That's a statewide deadline. Uh, so I did submit um, a grant um, for 2022 in support of the return of our summer concert series under our new pavilion. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that they'll be able to help us out a little bit with that. I'll keep you posted. And um, other than that, I did just want to note our um, statistics real quick as part of my report. Um, the circulation, you know, was, I think, really good for September. September is a slow month for us typically anyway, but we had our third highest um, circulating September on record, um, just behind um, 2019 and 2018. Um, so we're not far off from normal. <laughs> <laughs> um, much higher than last year, obviously, when we were just doing the takeout. Uh, so I think, you know, we're, we are starting to see more and more people coming back. I think I mentioned within my report, too, that we had one Halloween book checked in. We, we have, it's close to, I think, 100 in the collection for kids' Halloween books. And we had, there was one day where there was, like, for two or three days, I guess, there was only one Halloween book sitting there. Wow. We were supplementing <laughs> with other, like, spooky-ish <laughs> books from the collection. Like, if it, if you had a, a book with a ghost or a witch, it got put on the display, even mm. if it wasn't Halloween. Um, so that was exciting to see because, you know, people are definitely taking advantage of our seasonal collections. Um, so, yeah, I think um, things are are definitely heading in the right direction in terms of um, the material we loan out. Um, I was asked about the hotspots before the meeting. I'm glad that was mentioned because we've started circulating the hotspots. Um, and uh, we only have five, and there was one day last week where none of them were here, so that was good um, because I think it shows people are um, using them. I think, you know, we just, um, because we live in a world where technology is so literally at hand, we think everyone has internet access or has free Wi-Fi. And I don't think that they do. I think people are, you know, sometimes on a data plan and if they get one week where they don't have to rely on that data plan, um, and that could eventually, uh, could help them out with uh, saving some money. So the people who are using it seem very happy. 
um, with the service and we had someone come in who's just moved to the area today to get um, came in to get a library card lives down the road and didn't know we had hotspots and was very excited to learn about that so he said he would definitely be back for a hotspot so you know I think that's a great service that we're able to offer um, through the, the through the mass board of library commissioners so yeah so I think um, stats wise and and for most of my report wise all is well so <laughs> Yes. I just wanted to comment on the webinars you attended. Oh, yes. They were look outstanding and good for you for doing that. You know, they yeah. really were. So the town yeah. is always trying to get us, yeah. not trying to get us, but encouraging us to sign up for um, uh, some, uh, some webinars through Maya, which is the town's insurance program. And I think, you know, there's they get some credit when staff sign up and sometimes I find that they don't pertain anything to what I do you know it's mm -hmm. a, it's a it's always seems like it's you know things to do with roads and I don't know like the, right. you know facilities things that I don't deal with on a, a daily basis necessarily so when I saw um, two that had come up um, the excellent customer service and, and dealing with an angry public in a post-covid world mm -hmm. which I thought was an interesting so title right. because we're it's not a post-covid world we're still in covid um but they're an angry public um if for the most part you know our, our public is not angry um <laughs> um but it was there, there was it was really helpful mm -hmm. to take in a lot of it like a lot of these kind of topical you know webinars do offer you know self-care or you know tips as part of it or what you can do to help yourself or what you can do to help your staff get through so that's always good to have that reiterated because i think sometimes we forget that that's part of providing good service is also taking care of yourself so that you're in a good headspace to provide the service um so they were really great i, w I was glad that i um looked into that and i was i was happy to uh do it and I'm, I'm sure as more applicable ones come up like that then i will register for those also good it's job. only an hour so mm. it's not like it's eating up you know my entire <laughs> my entire day good job you yeah. got a lot to do so thanks nice for pointing that out that. thank you yes mm. so yeah other than that i think those those were my highlights from the director's report Anybody have any questions, comments? No? Okay. Do you want to set the next meeting date? That would be great. Um, my first choice is um, Tuesday, November 16th at 4. And if that doesn't work, perhaps Tuesday, November 9th at 4, back, backing up a little bit. 16th is fine with me. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Danielle, is that Works good for, for me? Yep. Okay, Diane, is that good for you? Yep, the 16th. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so yes. next meeting, Tuesday, November 16th at 4 o'clock. Great. Um, one of the big things that will be on there is that uh, annual action plan that's in, in support of the strategic plan. And I just wanted to point that out because our strategic plan already is only through FY23, um, wow. which ends wow. July 2024. Yeah, to, yeah, to, wow. no, 2023, right, duh, okay, so, mm -hmm. so um, we are able to, um, as long as you have an action plan on file that is still useful, you can keep pushing that, so we'll do the action plan, it, we'll talk about it at the November meeting, um, it's due December 1st, and that will cover FY23. However, I don't think that within that year I'm going to be ready to write another strategic plan. Um, so we will probably do another, like a year from now, do another action plan because it will still be applicable to the current strategic plan. And then maybe that next year in 2024 revisit doing that whole thing again with an actual strategic plan. I think it would be nice to be further away from the height of COVID before developing right. a strategic mm -hmm. plan. Correct. So I think a year from now seems like, eh, I don't know, but I mean, hopefully, but we'll see. But at the next meeting, we'll definitely be talking more about that just to give you a, a heads up. Good. Okay, great. If we have no other business, then we need a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you. This October 19th, 2021 meeting of the Efficient Public Library Board of Trustees is officially adjourned. It is 4.55. Thank you.